patriarchy compared with gender neutrality continued. Six, you cannot make exceptions. Some especially talented women can ace men's jobs, but if you make exceptions, other women will cry for those privileges. Likewise, a man may make a better wife than most women, but his marrying another man disposes of Christianity and, and, and other traditional religions there, and, and natural law. <laughs> Therefore, you cannot make exceptions, as a crack in a glass defeats the purpose of the glass. Um, Men and women either have God-given gender roles, men being an authority over women, as Christianity and, and, and other traditional religions taught, or they don't. And natural law. Uh, seven, neutrality doesn't work. A company CEO is either a man or a woman. Companies don't have one male and one female as co-owners. Also, women spend far more than than men on average. Therefore, husbands should control the family finances instead of having joint bank accounts. And if the husband's biology urges sex uh, uh, five times a week, yet the wife wants it only twice a month, joint agreement reduces sex to twice, to twice a month. And equal authority breeds battles for supremacy. After a divorce, joint property ownership causes years-long property disputes to drag through the courts. With these major differences, so-called gender neutrality causes gross inequality. Paradoxically, equal rights destroys the possibility of fairness and equality. Supply and demand. In every situation with two competing groups, if group A controls the supply to group B's demand and group e A is demand-free, group B is in big trouble. Imagine two armies on a battlefield. One has regular soldiers, the other is genetically altered. They don't need food or drink to sustain themselves. On rare occasion when hunger or thirst overwhelms them, they play a miniature video game and their desires are satisfied. The regular army is clearly in jeopardy. Imagine a castle under siege. The invaders cannot penetrate the fortress, so they wait until the occupants' food and water run out, while the invaders are supplied with food and water from the outside. Obviously, the B groups would be wiped out if they cannot level the playing field of supply and demand by any means necessary. Yet today, one group now entrusts another group with dominating multiple categories of supply and demand. If one group told another group to trust them while using sweet words that oozed honey while batting long eyelashes, would that make any difference? Worse yet, men are tricked into thinking that women are much nicer, smarter, more spiritual, and far more deserving. Men participate in their own uh, demise. Recapitulation. Some things considered axiomatic are dead wrong. Though heavier objects supposedly fall faster than lighter ones, objects fall at the same speed. Other seem, things seem obviously wrong but are right, uh, all, such as all the world's gold could fit into to a 22-meter cube and all platinum in, into a 6-meter cube. Erroneously proposing women's equal rights, though seemingly right, is also dead wrong. Either that or every significant culture throughout recorded history and religious leaders, including Jesus Christ, were wrong for being patriarchal. Feminist societies like the Amazons were mythological, with no matriarchal societies according uh, to modern feminism. Society is better off than in ancient times, but that's due to advanced medical knowledge, labor-saving devices freeing people from drudgery, and Christianity's influence, which counteracts barbarity, not feminism. Shame on men who complain about so-called dangerous theistic beliefs of oppressing women. Since the feminist explosion, women have been disavowing themselves of men. If you are male and this has not already harmed you, it will impact your uh, male children, grandchildren, or subsequent generations. They may be subjugated to women, and if they feel the need for sex or a romantic partner, they might have to be gay. And don't pretend that fathers want their sons to be gay. Women lacking male privileges for thousands or perhaps millions of years didn't even begin to make them extinct. If women were so oppressed, how did they quickly galvanize themselves into a sudden explosion of feminism without retaliation? Rather, women were prevented from essentially becoming uh, so-called men who have no use for real men. 
Again, most men's innate biology prevents them from repudiating women, and most mothers' innate biology prevents them from repudiating their children. However, children don't have an innate biology to prevent them from repudiating their parents. That's why we have strict laws such as those to prevent children from running away. Likewise, women are not naturally connected to men. Therefore, if men do not re reassert themselves quickly, they will be completely abandoned. Besides, males who lack a woman's influence disproportionately wage war on each other, commit suicide, and drink themselves to death. Evil is unmitigated self-interest, as is feminism. Women acquiring traditional male privileges violates thousands, perhaps many millions of years of consistent world history, violates the original Christianity as given by Christ, is destroying the family, the root of society, and is destroying male-female relations completely. Feminism is poison. It's like cyanide. Conclusion, though transsexuality is unnatural, trans persons attempt to have their bodies accurately reflect their already existing role of reversal. At least they're consistent. Uh, those engaging in role reversal who do not alter their bodies, namely feminists and their supporters, are not only unnatural, they are, they are inconsistent. Since desires to be a member of the opposite sex uh, never go away. Desires to embrace opposite sex roles may never go away. Mere de but, however, mere desires can be a healthy uh, can be healthy signs of one's creative mind, providing interesting personality variations. However, behavior patterns can be modified with reasonable effort to become more normal. Uh, we've been talking politely about this issue for the last 50 years, which has had no effect on angry, stubborn, and adamant feminists. Since feminism harbors the ability to completely destroy the traditional family, man-woman relations, and society itself, radical action is necessary. Since around 1970, the period when, when feminism gained dominance, men have killed themselves 200% more frequently. What do you, don't you understand about that? Men are like lambs under delu the delusion that lions are vegetarians. They must repent by repudiating women's equal rights, putting themselves back in charge where they belong, and re-embracing our Creator's plan. This plan was understood as men ha having as much authority over women as, as w women had over children. That's no insult. Children are blessed, and children are often happier than adults. Uh, we must also put men in subjection to a community of elders to squash abuse and neglect. Notably, arguing with women is usually a waste of time. Most women, like most men, are basically selfish. They will do what they think is best for themselves regardless. Yet, in this case, feminism caused women to go to work when they were previously free from this burden. There's also much evidence that women are now less happy. Restoring the patriarchy would require radical changes in the laws, largely large-scale uh, police and military action, and individual and group revolution. Men say no, but when liberals have a cause, they demand action, as when soldiers were called to enforce integration of the schools in 1957. And although people are told repeatedly by the leftist media that they are alone and backwards in their opposition to feminism, that is false! If every traditionalist spoke up and combated feminism together, it would be overturned. Don't feel sorry for women who trespass onto historical male privileges, especially since many reject the responsibility that goes with it. Uh, uh, So-called feminism is choosing to be wormwood, not sugar and spice. So-called women's equal rights turns women into wicked witches, not princesses. This radical movement must be destroyed. So those of you who desire traditional man-woman adult relationships for your children and grandchildren, wake up! Furthermore, I believe there will be a literal Armageddon, an ultimate battle between the evil and righteous on earth before Judgment Day. The evil forces might be comprised of women and some perverted men who will attempt to destroy the last remaining real man. The righteous men will have to annihilate them to win the battle. So, be prepared! 